Hello folks, uh, this is part of the series we are doing on speaking to people or giving relevant inputs to folks who are at different levels in, their, in terms of their percentile. Suppose I am consistently getting less than 10 in LRDI, how do I go here? If I am consistently getting 15 to 30, how do I go here? So the inputs and, and, and kind of relevant key things are dramatically different for each category. All of us who are giving inputs and advice and uh, strategies are speaking to something which is median or above, above median and sometimes that's not that doesn't do justice to this or to this i'm going to start from scratch less than 10 i'm consistently getting less than 10 marks and so less than 10 marks is i'm not even able to solve one set in lrdi and so there's a serious problem if you're stuck here you're in jail then all this thing about even lrdi puzzle selection doesn't work too much because chances are you're selecting one puzzle seeing that and then after 10 12 minutes you start losing confidence flip to the next one do that for 10 15 minutes lose confidence take some risks here and there mark something from the choice mark something with answer choice some of three answers are in place you see of the last five minutes it could very well be the trajectory someone who's consistently getting seven eight nine marks and so this means there is not a puzzle selection problem but a little bit of a i don't believe in myself in being able to solve one set completely and so and I am telling you you can solve one set completely cat puzzles are tough LRDI is a good section but every single one of you should have a very good chance of cracking one puzzle completely the litmus test for that is to take cat 22 21 20 19 18 17 that DILR puzzle solve them actual cat puzzle solve them when you, if you are here and you're solving that then I would say Take one set at a time, forget the timer, solve, get all five answers correct, verify them, check them and then say I'll do the next one. Don't evaluate your speed, don't evaluate the decision making variable of should I have selected this set, don't evaluate the idea of in an exam context when should I be doing this, none of that. Solve one puzzle at a time, actual previous year CAD puzzle, see, get five answers correct. If it takes you an hour and ten minutes, it's alright, doesn't matter. You need to have, your mind needs to rewire itself and say, I can solve LRDI. One puzzle I can solve. You do 6, 7, 8, 10 of them and you get them. By the time you're solving the 8th, ninth, you will realize that you can practically pick any puzzle and you have a very good chance of finishing it in 30 minutes. That's a cue for your brain to say, good, now I can definitely do one puzzle in any cat. Even if my puzzle selection is wrong, I can see it through. If I make a wrong puzzle selection and come out of it in 10 minutes, I will confidently see through the next one. You're not worried about not even grabbing one puzzle. That's the first battle to, to fight. So this, don't even take mocks, go to previous year papers, take 10 sets, solve one at a time without timer, get everything right. Slowly, method, you have to draw 17 tables, draw 17 tables. You need a big white board to have a crack at it, get a big white board. You need to have five papers kept side by side, look at it, write everything down and do it, do it. You want a calculator and Excel file to crack it, use it. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. See it through so that your brain starts saying, I can solve LRDI sets. And then this comes into the picture. If you are here, this means you roughly have one set in the bag. One set in the bag is there. Right. From here on in, you need to take a uh, decision on, you need to work on kind of two things. One is doing that, selecting that one set and seeing it through quickly enough. Second thing, making sure you're selecting the right first set. So puzzle selection plays a role. And once you have selected the puzzle and you're confident of cracking it, you should dial out this noise. In LRDI, all of us have noise. At least I have it. And I've taken CAT 10, 12 times, last 10, 12 years. I have this weird background music running in my head, which is continuously saying, this is the right set, this is the right set. Have I selected one thing that sucks? Is there an easier one than this? Because there are only four. By instead of selecting the easiest one, if you select the toughest one, you're in jail. You can't really bounce back after that. So, but you have to have the conviction to say, I will see this through. That there building, that, that, that confidence of saying one thing I've selected, I'll see it through. That is important. If you can see that through in 20 minutes, you will find one more, that confidence will see you through. So you have to improve your puzzle selection. You have to say, I'm going to select the, I'm going to back myself to select the right puzzle confidence wise. 
Second, you need to work on which kind of puzzles work for you. Is it a mathematical puzzle? Is it a Venn diagram puzzle? Is it a puzzle with a lot of constraint? Is it a puzzle with few constraints but some fun data to be unlocked? Is it a data intensive chart based puzzle? Which of these categories is my, my home ground? You need to get better and better on that. That's your thing. To go from 12 marks to say 20 marks, 21 marks. That, that shift. From here to here, it's a big, big, big shift. This, if you're here and you're saying, look, I can finish one set and I gamble in another, I do maybe two, three questions. How do I reach a point where I can definitely finish two sets? Right? So important, you need to get tons of practice. Do lots of variety, get better and better at puzzle selection. After that, and there's one thing that I have not been really good at, is what happens from here to here? There are guys who crack one puzzle in 17, 18 minutes, crack one more in 16, 17 minutes. Because of the confidence of the first one feeds into the second one. And decision making is easier. So they're sitting at 34 minutes. They've got two things in the bag. 5 plus 5, 10 questions, right? They're looking at 30 marks. And then they don't know what to do in the last six minutes. But they're, they're used to solving in methodical template way. They're not used to gambling. Maybe that's something that you need to add. Where you say, look, I have six minutes remaining, seven minutes remaining. I get the framework of it. I go from answer choices. I look at theta. Imagine that this can work. Fix it in. Take some chances. Get two questions, right? That is something that you need to add. Because going from 30 to 36 is huge. 30 marks, 36 marks is huge. And so, if you can solve three sets completely, that's brilliant. You're, you're, you're freaking playing with 99.8, 99.9. But I know there are quite a few who are here who can get eight, thir 10 questions attempted. I think all 10 are right. Maybe one goes wrong. You get 27 or 26 mark. That is brilliant. 99 percentile plus. But then they waste or let the last six minutes drift and not give themselves one, one punt or a gamble of getting two, three more, right? That is something that you could work on to, to amp it up. Here to here is super tough. Right? So here, tons of questions, just practice, no time constraint, no mock scenario. Here, question selection, focus, 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 understand where what your strong points are. Here to here, some amount of here to here, you're getting one set completely right for sure. That is right, you're selecting the second one. Then you think about how to gamble for the, for the third one. Thanks. Hush.